today we're looking at two beautiful yet imposing canines that are rooted in ancient mastiffs, the Great Dane and the Rottweiler. Both of these gorgeous dogs have a calm and confident way of looking at the world and can be downright silly when playing with their family. Now there are more than a handful of differences though and the most prominent being size and we're going to be comparing them head to head to cover all of those similarities and differences. Welcome back to the Fenrir Great Dane Show. If you're new here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist. I'm the founder here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could ever want to know about the incredible Great Dane, then how you can become a high-level canine leader that raises perfect Great Dane companions. So if you love the Great Dane as much as we do here at Fenrir, start your journey by hitting that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell, and you'll never miss a future Great Dane video. So then, let's dive into today's video and we'll find out all the similarities and differences between these two absolutely glorious canines. Now, it's always helpful to know what a particular breed was initially bred to do so that we can understand how they came to be so loved today when those roles aren't always still around. Now, the Great Dane, for example, we know as a gentle giant, an incredibly affectionate companion, but they were initially bred to hunt large game and be defences against assassins. These roles meant the Dane was a fierce hunter of vicious wild boar, among other game, and had to be equally ferocious. Now today, they are still exceptional protectors, if the situation ever calls for it, but they do prefer to cuddle with their family and maintain their gentle giant status. Hey guys, very quickly, I just wanted to ask, are you following us over on Instagram? If you're not, there's two accounts I would love for you to check out. The first one is our brand account, at Femria Canine Leaders, where you can see more about our industry-leading products that we create. If you're interested in following me personally, that's at I am Will Atherton, where you can see behind the scenes of me working with some of the most extreme behavior cases in the world and what it takes to run these kind of YouTube channels. And maybe if you just want to be able to come over and chat with me, that's the place for you. So there'll be links down in the description box for both of our Instagram pages. I'd love for you to come and check them out and hopefully we'll chat over there. The Rottweiler today is thought of as a protection dog and they are excellent in this role, but they were initially bred to herd and work cattle in the town of Rottweil, Germany. Their ancestors were working drover dogs for the Roman army herds and, left, and they left them in the region as the Roman Empire fell and the armies receded. Now already being adept in working livestock, the locals quickly adopted and refined the breed to assist in moving herds to market before the railroads took over that job, which is where they then started to gain popularity in police, military and protection roles. Now, when it comes to their beautiful appearance, they may share a common German heritage, but they are clearly two very different breeds, especially when it does come to these appearances. Few other canines can compare to the Great Dane, who is tall and graceful as a dancer once they've grown into those long legs at least. They have large jowls and short, sleek coats that come in a vast array of colour patterns. Now, the Rottweiler is nearly the opposite of the Dane in look, so they can have large jowls sometimes. They are almost exclusively black with tan colour markings and have short, dense coats that lay close to their body. Now, where the Dane is tall and narrow, the Rotty is square and stocky in their build. So then when it comes to their personalities, the two imposing breeds have more in common than they do in their appearance. You'll find both the Great Dane and the Rottweiler to be smart enough to use their size and sweet eyes to their advantage. Their lower energy levels keep them from wanting to excel at any obedience work for extremely long periods and can quickly turn this into independence or stubbornness. Now this isn't the rule for every individual of course, since many Great Danes and Rotties are excellent service dogs, which does require a high level of training training and focus, but if you're considering this as a companion role, it's something to be aware of. Now, because of their size and protective instincts, both breeds will do best with experienced canine leaders that are calm and consistent with boundaries and expectations. It's generally not a great idea to get a dog that weighs as much or more than you do if you don't have experience with these large, powerful breeds. Their health needs, costs and your consistency with boundaries are going to be a bit different than you might be used to with smaller dogs, so it is always important to, again, factor these into your decision making. Now, when it comes to their temperament, Great Danes and Rottweilers diverge again when it comes to this. The Great Dane is known for being a gentle giant with small animals and children and seems to have lost all of those ancestral fierce hunting instincts. 
their modern temperament is what makes them such fantastic family companions and incredible service dogs. They are amazingly affectionate and they are just so loyal to their family, but are generally friendly with strangers as well. Now, socialization is imperative with Great Danes because their size makes them a magnet for attention and a Rottweiler because of their protective nature. A well-socialized Rottweiler can be very friendly with strangers and small animals just as quickly as a Great Dane can. Now, Rottweilers are incredibly loving with their family and love to watch the home's activity from a comfortable spot. Their spurts of energy make them very playful and they do exceptionally well with children, again, when raised and socialized well. Both breeds really are fantastic family companions and fill their homes with plenty of love and cuddles. However, what separates them a little bit is that Rottweiler's more inherent, defensive and protective abilities, which makes them more naturally wary of strangers or things that are a little bit out of the normal, which is why even more so high levels of canine leadership are absolutely mandatory with a breed like a Rottweiler to ensure you keep themselves and others safe. So then, to kind of wrap this up, these two powerful breeds are imposing family companions with gentle hearts and nothing really but admiration when it comes to their families. Both the Dane and the Rotty were never told that they are too big to be lap dogs, and it's common for both to try and sit in the lap of their favourite person, or at least around their feet. They both thrive on human companionship, but do well with other dogs and small animals while being incredibly attentive to small children. The Rotti is a beautiful protector and guardian that does its best in homes with very experienced and consistent canine leaders. The Dane is a little bit more forgiving for people with not as much experience, but still not for first-time owners, and you'll find them to be equally capable guardians with stunning good looks to boot. So I hope you enjoyed that quick fire comparison of these two regal and incredible dog breeds. If you did, a thumbs up is always most welcome on the video. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell as we've got two new videos coming to this channel every single week. And I cannot wait to speak to you again on the next episode of the Femre Great Dane Show.